Welcome to PNG Trends Burners Insights into the historic papal visits to Papua New Guinea. In this video, we will explore the visits of Pope John Paul II in 1984 and 1995, and provide an overview of Pope Francis' visit in 2024. Let's begin with a brief overview of Pope Francis's planned visit. Pope Francis is scheduled to visit Papua New Guinea from September 6 to September 9, 2024. His mission is to promote unity, peace, and spiritual renewal. During his visit, he will engage with various segments of society, including state leaders, the disabled, the sick, and the youth. The government has allocated 10 million kina for the preparations. This visit is anticipated to have a profound impact on the Catholic community, which now comprises approximately 2 million followers, representing nearly 30% of the country's population. The Vatican has released the logo for Pope Francis's trip to Papua New Guinea, featuring a colorful cross with sunsets and birds of paradise, symbolizing the country and its national flag. Scheduled from September 6 to 9, 2024, this visit is part of an 11-country tour. Prior to the visit to PNG, Pope Francis met with a man from Hala province, Mundia Kapanga, and discussed deforestation, a major concern in Papua New Guinea, which has the third largest rainforest in the world. Pope Francis has also a strong voice against logging and deforestations. Here is what he said about the destruction of tropical rainforest in Madagascar. Dalla deforestazione eccessiva a vantaggio di pochi. Il suo degrado compromette il futuro del paese e della nostra casa comune. Now, let's take a look back at Pope John Paul II's visit to Papua New Guinea in 1984. At that time, the Prime Minister was Sir Michael Samari, the Deputy Prime Minister was Pius Wingdi, and the Governor General was Sir Toro Lokoloko. The Archbishop of Port Moresby was Virgil Patrick Copas, MSC. The Pope was warmly received by the nation's leaders and the people. His visit was intended to celebrate the centenary of the arrival of the first Catholic missionaries and to emphasize the importance of unity and faith. One of the most significant moments of the 1984 visit was the celebration of Mass, which drew large crowds of enthusiastic worshippers. The Pope's homilies focused on peace, unity, and maintaining strong moral values, leaving a lasting impact on the nation's spiritual life. At that time, the Catholic population was approximately 700,000. I am happy to have come to this young and vigorously developing nation. And I am grateful to God for the opportunity of spending this, this next days among the beloved people of this country. It is in friendship and brotherhood that I come to you today, desiring to strengthen the respect and love that unites us. But I come especially as chief shepherd of the Catholic Church to make a pastoral visit in this land. It is my great joy and pleasure on behalf of my country to welcome you, not only as the leader of the Catholic Church, but also to welcome you as one of the world's great leaders, seeking peace among all peoples and promoting the dignity of mankind. You come to us today not as a stranger to a strange land, but as an honored friend to visit friends.
Jesu Keriso ena maino perevana lau abia mai umui dekenai. Egu vadi vadi be turana ona tadi kaka ladanai lau mai. Vada eni umui abi gudae totona. Lau noi noi dirava dekenai, umui danu ya noho hari ela bona, hainai, hainai. As you know, this is not the first time that I have set foot on your land over Ten years ago, when I was still Archbishop of Krakow, I already had the pleasure of being in your midst. I still remember well the beauty of the landscape and the warmth of your hospitality. I recall to the rich diversity of your citizens, how you are composed of many different tribes, each with its own history and tradition. For some time, no, it has been a special desire of my heart to celebrate in Papua New Guinea the centenary of the arrival of the first missionaries who came to you in Port Moresby in obedience to Christ's command. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I hope to encourage and strengthen my brothers and sisters in the practice of the faith. Behind long independence, belong this country, long year 1975, all be so belong you pela. Ima, imakim Santu Michael by M. I. N. S. Lookout Vilong Upela Stret. Oli Maikim Van Pela Spirit, because Upela is a belief long all good Pela Spirit na Upela is a pret long all spirit no good. Santu Michael. I pren true belong, people belong God. E mi help him you pela long vinim Satan na all time belong them. To them I ask him em, by em I look out him all leader belong government belong you pela. All get a people belong this pela country. A dispela un one time belong you me too. The first attempt of evangelization was made by the Marist on the islands of Woodlark and Rook in 1847. But they had to leave. Five years later, another attempt was made there by the Pime missionaries, blessed Giovanni Matsuconi, who died at Woodlark in 1855 and who was recently beatified in Rome with the arrival of the missionaries of the Sacred Heart 
on the feast of Saint Michael the Archangel in 1882. A new era dawned in 1896. The Society of Divine Word opened up a third area of missionary endeavor. The Church, living among new peoples and nations, gradually grows towards maturity as indigenous sons and daughters take up and respond to the divine call of the gospel. It is my fervent prayer that the church in Papua New Guinea, as she continues to grow and mature, may experience a great flowering of vocations to the priesthood and religious life. The missionary church in this country realized the importance of fostering vocations. In this, the establishment of catechists and teacher training schools proved, proved providential for, for vocations in the various regions. Today, you are blessed with the regional major seminary of Bumana, which, which prepares for the priesthood young men coming from all the local churches. These seminarians give us great hope for the future of the church in Papua New Guinea. I thank God that many women of Papua New Guinea have accepted his call to the religious life as, er as early as 1912. The first local congregation of sisters was founded, the Daughters of Mary Immaculate. And six years later, the handmaids of the Lord were begun were begun here in Papua. There have also been occasions to the religious brotherhood. On this historic occasion, we lift up our hearts in an ardent prayer for more priestly and religious vocations so that the work of evangelization can be carried on. Mi givim gude long yupela, ol pikinini, bilong sios, na yupela, ol bilip manmeri, bilong Mount Hagen Strait. Yupela, ikai kai dispela, wan pela, bret, emi santu oikaristia, na body bilong Christ. Olsem na yupela ikama wanpela pipel bilong got body hide bilong Christ na santusios bilongem.
100 jaar ego pinis. Sios ista plong Papua New Guinea. Ikama. Tude emi amamas trulong bung one time sios bilong golgata hap bilong grau long one and bishop bilong grom emi holim ples bilong santu pita istab one time yupela Today, you me bunkia. Now one time, Olgeta man Mary belong Sios. Istap long Papua New Guinea. You me Olgeta, he like give him. Ona na thank you long Santo Trinita. Long one em both he make him come up less clear pinis think think belong em belong all time namel long old people belong and he stop long this pella country em this pella think think long out in good news na ready me more get a man Mary. Today, one time you pella me like give him thank you. Naona long Santo Trinita, long one em all people belong Papua New Guinea. Only line belong God now. Only one pella people. Jesus he ready him long blood belong em idea to us. Me out him, thank you, belong me, because you pella he bung one time sios, belong Christ. Na because you pella he come up one belt. Time you pella he bung one time Papa, na son, na Holy Spirit. Mi prebai bispela mari mari, dispela mari mari bilong got, i kama ples klia moa, yet inside long yupela na name long yupela. Bai emi got pass long yupela, long time i kama behind. Na bai. Emi helpim yupela, long time yupela, istab laip hia long ground. True ground belong yupela, emi nais pela moa. Olsem na yupela. No, he can lose him, think, think, long life, be long all time. Na long bung, one time, God, long heaven. The church in your countries has been endowed by the Holy Spirit with unity in diversity. The faithful belong to a great variety of cultures and backgrounds as is reflected in their many languages and traditions. One of the many ways in which this unity is made visible is collaboration and, and joint 
action by the bishops' conference of Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands. I wish to encourage you in this important collegial endeavor. Episcopal conferences should strive to address the major pastoral problems affecting the life of the church. There are many topics that await the clarifying, the encouraging teaching of the bishops, the family, sacraments, evangelization, catechesis, and prayer are just examples. Joint pastoral documents give opportunities to present the official doctrine of the Church in clear and understandable terms while taking into consideration the concrete situations and problems. Allow me now to direct your attention to the topic of the laity. They have made and continue to make a truly indispensable contribution to the life and vision of the Church in your countries. As bishops, we have a great responsibility to assist families and married couples. Our special service is to proclaim the truth of the gospel, to hand on in its purity and entirety the Church's teaching on marriage and family life. I thank you for your warm hospitality and for all the preparations which you have made for my pastoral visit. In the bonds of hierarchical communion and collegial service which unite us, in the universal fellowship of charity and faith which binds all the local churches with one, and one another and with the Lord, let us go forward together in the name of Jesus. Christ died for all of us. 
to liberate us from the bond of selfishness, from which by ourselves we could never escape to make us free and to enable us to live for him. This is the gift which Christ won for all of us, clergy, religious, late. Lay leaders and catechists also serves, serve as ambassadors for Christ, seeking to promote harmony and peace. Here in Papua New Guinea, your apostolic efforts have been vitally needed to hand on the message of the gospel to your brothers and sisters, men and women religious, by their religious consecration, play a special role in the Church's ministry of reconciliation. Precisely by means of the vow of obedience, they decide to be transformed into the likeness of Christ who redeemed humanity and made it holy by his obedience. Working in hierarchical communion with the local bishop, priests strive to build up the unity of the local Christian community. Above all, dear brothers, you must foster reconciliation in the Church and in the world through your attentive ministry of the sacrament of penance and the celebration of the Eucharist in order to live for Christ and no longer for, for ourselves to collaborate in the ministry of reconciliation, to build the kingdom of God, we must bear the cross and follow Jesus. in Papua New Guinea has given me great joy. I bid you all farewell with deep emotion and sincere gratitude. As I met the clergy and religious, the catechists, and members of Christian families, and especially the young people and the sick, I could see great hope 
for the future of the church in Papua New Guinea. Enjoy. God bless Papua New Guinea. Next, we turn to Pope John Paul II's visit in 1995. The Pope's plane has now landed here at Jackson Airport. During this visit, the Prime Minister was Sir Julius Chen, the Deputy Prime Minister was Chris Hyveda, and the Governor General was Sir Wiwa Koroi. The Archbishop of Port Moresby was Brian James Barnes, OFM. And the moment of truth is now about to happen. Pope John Paul II. The Pope was once again warmly received by the nation's leaders this and the people. The, the primary reason the for this visit was the beatification the of Peter Tarot, a catechist martyr during the World War II. The Catholic Church was led out of the plane by the Vatican representative in Port Mosby, the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Ramiro Molina. A significant moment of the 1995 visit was the beatification ceremony of Peter Tarot, which was a milestone for the local Catholic community. The Pope's presence and his messages of faith and unity resonated deeply with the population, reinforcing the Church's commitment to peace and well-being. By this time, the Catholic population had grown to around 1.2 million. For a Pope who went through an assassination attempt in 1981, a hip injury and a finger injury, and at age 74, he looks very much refreshed. At the bottom of the stairs, His Holiness was greeted by the Governor General, Sir Wiwa Korowi. His wife, Lady Nancy, accepts the Pope's personal greetings as the first Papua New Guinea woman dignitary to do so. The Prime Minister took a bow and kissed the hand of the pontiff as he was led through the official welcome ceremony. I come to my happy brothers and sisters in this young nation as an accessor of St. Peter to whom the Lord entrusted a special ministry of safeguarding the apostolic faith and of preserving the unity of God's people in love. It is my desire and purpose to strengthen the Christian faith of this country and stay bear witness to Jesus Christ and to encourage them to remain ever steadfast in the gospel which they receive through the preaching of the missionaries. At the same time, I come to all the people of Papua New Guinea Christian and not Christian alike, as a friend and a brother, on a pilgrimage of solidarity and goodwill, and with profound respect for every one of you. As you are aware, the central event of my visit is the gratification of Peter to Rome, catechist and martyr. You can be truly proud of your Malaysian brother. He has brought distinction and honor to your people. Peter Tulo is an out outstanding example of a family man, a church leader, a person prepared to lay down his life for God and neighbor. I regret that I am not able to be to Peter to Lord's beloved Tolai people on this occasion. But circumstances have not permitted me to go to New Britain. I wish I could visit all the people in the various parts of these islands, but I can only stay very briefly. Therefore, I assure all of you, wherever you are, that I am thinking of you. I am especially aware of the whole country's concern for the suffering people of Bougainville. 
to you, people of Bougainville, I send a special word of encouragement. If you have been treated unjustly, I invite you to remove bitterness from your hearts. If you, if you were armed unjustly, I ask you to put them down and seek reconciliation. Unlike visiting foreign dignitaries, security for the Pope was so tight that the Sir Hubert Murray Highway from the airport to Koki and the Killer Killer Road were closed off to traffic to allow free access for the papal motorcade. The streets were lined with people who wanted to catch a glimpse of the pontiff. He travelled on the open back Pope Mobile. At the Don Bosco Technical College, the crowd there, about 2,000 in total, had been waiting and ready since 3 o'clock in the afternoon. After he accepted the hands of his well-wishers, the bishops joined him at the front of the chapel for a silent prayer, which lasted almost five minutes. A prayer for his safe passage to Port Mosby. A prayer for his followers who received him with warmth. A prayer for his endurance over the three-day visit of Papua New Guinea. Among the many officials of the church he was able to meet, the oldest archbishop in Papua New Guinea, Leo Akfel. Dear brother priests, your ministerial priesthood is at the service for the common priesthood of the faithful, which is directed at the unfolding, unfolding of the baptismal grace of all Christians. With gratitude to each one of you and to all your brother priests who have not been able to come, I urge you never to lose sight of the great spiritual dignity and gift which you have received. Dear men and women religious, in Peter II wrote, all religious have a challenging model of fidelity. Here is a, a man whose sincere gift of self was like that of his Lord, who loved to the end. Like his Lord, he was a faithful witness. I urge you to live your religious consecration with generosity and unfailing fidelity to the demands of perfect charity. Each of your religious families brings its own gifts to the Church's evangelizing mission. Your names are too many to mention, but I thank all the congregations in Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands for the testimony and fruitfulness of your consecration and your apostolate. Dear members of the laity, there is a special, there is special significance in the fact that the first blessed of Papua New Guinea was a layman and a catechist. I hope that Peter the Rod will become a source of inspiration throughout the church for all who work in the lay apostolate, especially for catechists who represent the basic strengths 
of Christian communities, especially in the young churches. The villagers of Rakunai were drawn to Christ and helped to follow him by the radiant charity and zeal of Peter Terod. His spiritual maturity showed in his apostolic maturity. He paid particular attention to those who had become lukewarm in the practice of the faith <coughs> or who had abandoned it. As a catechist devoted to the spiritual welfare of, of others, even in situations where he risked arrest and imprisonment, he went in search of the sheep who had gone astray and did not rest until he had found it. How the young churches of this part of the world need men and women of Peter II to God's caliber. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, help of Christians, protect you and fill you with spiritual strength and courage and guide your, your feet into the way of peace. Amen. The Beatification Mass is a special ceremony seldom held outside the Vatican. After giving his final approval to make Peter Torot a blessed servant of the Church in June 1993, the Pope was then able to conduct the Beatification Ceremony in Papua New Guinea. In the Catholic Church tradition, in order for a man or woman to be exalted as a saint, it must be proven by society and the Church that that person lived an exceptionally holy life and where death occurred, again it must be accepted that the death was testimony to his or her fulfillment of the divine service. Blessed Peter Torot had passed all the tests that he had been indeed a martyr, a man of religious calling and died for his faith. As the church tradition goes, people can now pray to him that he may intercede on their behalf for divine blessing. Sainthood is the next step. All that is required is a miracle in order to demonstrate that Blessed Peter Torot was able to influence the order of nature to prove he was chosen by divine calling to serve his people in heaven. Holy Father, the Archbishop of Rabaul most humbly asked that the venerable servant of God, Peter Torot, be proclaimed blessed. That the venerable servant of God, Peter Torot, shall hereafter be invoked as blessed that his feast shall be celebrated every year on the seventh day of July in the places and according to the norms established by the church law in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pilas belong to Pela, all people belong to Papua New Guinea. Rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings. Dear brothers and sisters, today the people of God in Papua New Guinea repeat these words of the Apostle Peter with fervent hearts. You rejoice because the Universal Church 
recognizes that your fellow countrymen, Peter to Rod, shared Christ's sufferings to the point of martyrdom and has been found worthy of being, of being numbered among the blessed. With the joy which this occasion brings, I greet the people of God in Pap Papua New Guinea. I thank Archbishop Koronku and the whole Archdiocese of Port Moresby for the warm welcome given to me. Archbishop Hesse and the Catholic community of Rabaul would have liked this beatification to be held in a place where blessed Peter to Lord lived and was martyred with love and solidarity. My thoughts turn to all the inhabitants of New Britain, those present here and the great majority unable to attend, who have been affected by the recent volcanic eruption. I gladly greet all my brother bishops, all the priests, religious and deity of this land and of the Solomon Islands, and those who have come from other islands of the vast Pacific and from Australia <coughs> and from Australia and New Zealand. I extend my, my hand in friendship to our brothers and sisters of our Christian churches and ecclesial communities. I thank all the civil authorities for their presence at this solemn ceremony. Down the centuries, glorious pages of the Church's martyrology have been written in every generation. The sons and daughters of many churches in Asia are inscribed in the archives of truth written in letters of love. I myself have had the grace of canonizing the Korean and Vietnamese martyrs. We can also <coughs> recall St. Paul Miki and his companions martyred in Japan, Lorenzo Ruiz, the first saint of the Philippines, and Saint Peter Chanel, who suffered a, a martyr's death in the islands of the Pacific. Throughout this century, the faithful witnesses have been present in great numbers. The wars concentration camps and intolerance of our, own, of our own time have yielded a rich harvest of martyrs in many parts of the world. Also in Papua New Guinea, where many Christians belong, belonging to the various churches and ecclesial communities gave the supreme witness Today, your fellow countryman, Peter Duro, an honored son of the Tolai people, a catechist from New, New Britain, has been listed among them. A church everywhere signs, sings, Praise to God for this new gift.
the sufferings caused by the recent tragic eruption have drawn the Christian community of New Britain closer to the martyr Peter to Rome. In God's saving plan, suffering more than anything else makes present in the history of humanity the powers of the redemption. Just as the Lord Jesus saved his people by loving them to the end, even to death on, on a cross, so also he continues to invite each disciple to suffer for the kingdom of God. When united with the redemptive passion of Christ, human suffering becomes an instrument of spiritual maturity and a magnificent school of evangelical law. On the day of his death, blessed Peter asked his wife to bring him his catechist crucifix. It accompanied him to the end. Condemned without trial, he suffered his martyrdom calmly, following in the footsteps of his master, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, he too was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And yet this grain of wheat which fell silently into the earth has produced a harvest of blessings for the church in Papua New Guinea. I am particularly happy that there are many catechists here from all over Papua New Guinea. You, dear catechists, are direct witnesses and irrepressible evangelizers, the basic strength of Christian communities. From the beginning, the work of lay catechists in Papua New Guinea has made an outstanding and indispensable contribution to the spread of the faith and of the church. In the name of the whole church, I thank you for the sacred work which you are doing. May God reward and bless each one of you. The martyr's example speaks also to married couples. Blessed Peter to Lord had the highest esteem for marriage and even in the face of great personal danger and opposition, he defended the church's teaching on the unity of marriage and the need for mutual fidelity. He treated his wife, Paula, with deep respect and prayed with her morning and evening. For his children, he had the utmost affection and spent as much time with them as he could. If families are good, your villages will be peaceful and good. Hold, hold on to the traditions that defend 
and strength and family life. Special greeting to the many young people who are here. Blessed Peter is a mother for you too. He shows you not to be concerned only about yourselves, but to put yourselves generously at the service of others. As citizens, you should feel the need to work to improve your country and to ensure that society develops in honesty and justice, harmony and solidarity. As followers of Christ, guided by the truth of the gospel and the teachings of the church, built on the solid, built on the solid rock of faith and do your duty with love. Do not be afraid to commit yourselves to the task of making Christ known and loved, especially among the many people of your own age who make up the largest part of the population. For the church in Papua New Guinea, the beatification of Peter the Lord opens a new period in Christian maturity. In the history of the local church, in any country, the first native-born martyr always marks a new beginning. For this reason, as pastor of the Universal Church, I have fervently desired to share this great joy with you and join you in giving thanks to God for the first blessed of Papua New Guinea. <clears throat> to the intercession of the new blessed, I wish to commend with special affection the people of Bougainville, who for six years have been suffering the tragic consequences of violence, war and destruction. I extend a special word of encouragement to Bishop Gregory Sinkai. and the church in Bougainville for bearing a heavy physical and spiritual burden. I earnestly appeal to all sides in this dispute to negotiate a settlement in a spirit of goodwill and constructive openness. I pray that the discussions will have recently been initiated, will soon lead to a just and lasting peace with respect for the legitimate aspirations and rights of all concerned. May reconciliation and harmony once more prevail so that the reconstruction which all year can, can begin. To the people of New Britain, the fellow countrymen of Blessed Peter Toro, Martyr Catechist of Rava Rakunai, I repeat the words of the letter of Peter, Apostle Peter, rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings. Your recent tragedy has made you like your martyr, different in the kind of suffering you have had to undergo, but like him configured to the passion and death of the Lord. The crucified Jesus is the sign 
of God's unfailing love for every one of his children, for each and every one of you. Me like by you, Pella, a king in better to rot all time. You, Pella, a mass, think, think all time, long be the belong them. You, Pella, a mass, think, think all time, long family, family life belong them. You, Pella, a mass, think, think all time, long walk belong them. Because Peter to rot, he saw him rot long to you. And he saw him rot long to you, me all better. That's all more. Yet long all family belong Papua New Guinea. Na long all youth, na long all man Mary. All the outing talk belong belong God, long all people. Yupela Amamas, all get a body belong Yupela, he can turn him, he go, can of Amamas can. Amen. I live deeply with you this verification. The first blessed man from your country, from your, from your people, from your church, my congratulations to everyone of you, to your bishops, to your priests, missionaries, catechists, to all the catechists, the great feast of all the catechists everywhere in the world. You have this. God bless you and you have this and you have this and all of you, every, every one of you, the church and the society. At the Jackson's International Airport, the farewell ceremony was stately as was the arrival. Government and church leaders were in attendance as the Governor General Sir Wiwa Korowi took His Holiness Pope John Paul II through the second and final farewell program before his departure. Dear friends, dear people of Papua New Guinea, I take leave of you and your beautiful country with my heart filled with gratitude, joy, and hope. I am deeply grateful for the warm hospitality which the people of Papua New Guinea have shown me. I express my sincere thanks to all those who made this pastoral visit possible especially His Excellency, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and the distinguished members of Parliament. My thanks go likewise to my brother bishops, to the clergy, religious and deity, men of whom have made quiet and unseen sacrifices so that this visit may bring happiness and strength to others. In closure, the papal visits to Papua New Guinea in 1984, 1995, and 2024 have been and will be significant events for the Catholic community and the nation. Each visit has reinforced the Church's commitment to peace, unity, and equality and equity of the people. The visits have highlighted the strength of Catholicism in the country and the importance of working together to build a harmonious and inclusive society. Papua New Guinea leaders and its people will have to reflect on the importance of the papal's visits and what it means to care and share the nation's wealth equally among its most impoverished people.